If you watch any of our content here on Subpixel, you'll learn pretty quickly my love for older games. Wow, we did it. We beat Dragon Lore. The legend begins. Look at this dumb dragon. Not that I don't play modern games or think we haven't definitely refined a lot of things over the years, but older games played in their contexts can provide some incredible gaming experiences that I just don't think we get these days. So I've compiled a list of reasons as to why you should play older games. These aren't all the reasons and some won't even apply to you, but retro gaming is such a great experience for me, I thought I'd share some insights you can get from it. Game design is dated, but stories last forever. It's the same argument for why you should read the classics. Stories are at the heart of a lot of amazing classic games. They just might be harder to find. Games like Ultima 4 have an expansive story all about you and your quest to become the Avatar. Almost every character you interact with is unique and interesting, even if the system is so archaic by today's standards. Continuing to use Ultima 4 as an example of this, your interaction with NPCs isn't a list of choices, but typing keywords to see their responses. As someone who's been slowly going through the game, it's a lot to remember, and sometimes hard to think of what to ask, which is why I keep a nice big Google Sheet with each NPC's important information. But inside the games are some NPCs far more creative than some modern AAA games. They are just a little bit harder to talk to. The limitations game developers had often led to incredible game mechanics. Compromise is the name of the game. Limitations of hardware is still a very pressing issue in the modern gaming era, but the stories coming out of how developers overcame these limitations in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s are incredible. Recently on a live stream, Todd Howard talked about how they found a way to reboot the original Xbox during Morrowind's loading screens so it can reset the memory cache. Great tricks uh, that they taught us. I think my favorite one in Morrowind is you can actually, if you're running low on memory, you can reboot the original Xbox and the user can't tell. You can throw like a screen up. So when, they, when Morrowind loads sometimes, you get a very long load. That's us rebooting the Xbox. <laughs> Even the fog in Silent Hill was due to a limitation on the polygon count on the PS1. So they made the whole town foggy, which added to the already terrifying atmosphere. A lot of creative decisions in older games were due to their hardware limitations. And going back and playing these examples, their solutions still hold up today. Game developers experimented a lot. Game developers have tried a lot of different things since games originally came around. They still do today. but a lot of the ideas have been tried before and you can experience them now just by going back in time. I know I'm really beating the horse dead with Ultima 4, but it really branched out the medium. Unlike the previous Ultima games, which had you defeating an ultimate evil as your goal, 4 was all about becoming a shining example for all, an avatar. Creator Richard Garriott tried this new storyline after receiving letters from his fans that his games rewarded being evil far more than being good. So in Ultima 4, your focus is not slaying demons, but to develop a virtuous life and become the spiritual leader Britannia needs by understanding the eight virtues, descending the Stygian Abyss, and gaining access to the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. Sidebar here, but games used to have such amazing titles and names. Maybe it's that developers and writers today are too afraid to sound cheesy, but Codex of Ultimate Wisdom, that's like so cool. I'm not saying we have to go full He-Man on this, but cheese is good. Just say when. You can enhance your enjoyment of modern games by seeing how far we've come. When you find out where you've been, you can appreciate where you are. That was said by someone once, and I think it applies here. Seeing where we came from gives us a much better understanding of where modern game mechanics come from. Go back even 10 years and some shooters still didn't have the WASD figured out. I can't even think about playing a racing game today that doesn't use the right and left triggers for stop and go. Yet it took us years to figure it out. I recently started playing NetHack and other older roguelikes, and I am now taking copious notes on controls and layouts so I remember what the heck I'm doing when I come back to it for my next session. On the flip side, it's fun to see solutions. We've talked a lot about game designer solutions to certain controls, but imagine what today would be like if their system had been the one to take off if we were still using the arrow keys. Playing older games is fun, at least for me. 
And remember, just like modern games, not every game you try is going to be a winner. If you're unsure of what to try, pick your favorite studio or specific designer and work backwards. They might have a hidden gem they helped make back when they first got started. There are thousands of lists online of the must-play classics that you can find hundreds of games that fit your style. Just remember to take the extra time. They're worth it. Oh, I just had a dream that you didn't like, subscribe, and comment on our videos. Wouldn't that be a tragedy? You should do that so you always know when we have a new video out. Do it now.